Thank you so much for joining our channel. And today I continue continuing with the studies uh, of the different techniques in the Kobo Jutsu. Uh, we're going to, to use a particular concept of distance. Today we're going to study how a Kenshi, a swordman, can develop a draw and a cut with a really, really limited space. So when the attacker goes really, really close uh, to you and then how you can draw your sword. Uh, it is told, and this is how in our school has passed the tradition in, in the way this form was developed, that uh, Kenshi was trapped and suddenly he just cut both of the arms of the attacker and the people couldn't see what happened. So what's, the people were really amazed with the velocity and with the precision of the draw and mainly because of the fact that the opponent was really really close to the to the Kenshi. So we are used to see how this big Sayabiki goes, so I mean how the the Saya is going out and and rehearse the 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 sword in order to be able to cut. Or in this case we don't have almost we have almost no space. So how, how can we arrange our space? How can we arrange the time in order to be able to cut and, and do this particular kind of techniques? So the, the main biomechanical concept here is try to use your hips as a torsional axe in order to be able to generate space and generate enough strength in order to, to cut. The other thing is instead of drawing like Omotenuki, when the sword goes into the sagittal plane, or for example, Yokonuki, when the sword goes into the tran transverse plane, we are going to use the sword in the frontal plane. So it's the plane that divides us in a front line and a back line. So it looks like something that can divide me in two. So we're going to use this plane in order to be able to, to draw the sword. And then after the rehearse of the sword, we're going to use our hips or uh, our shoulders in order to generate torsion uh, and in that way we can cut in a really fast way. So, just to make uh, a brief introduction, I'm going to explain it later with uh, another opponent. The, the main uh, concept here is that you are going to get trapped, you're going to get cut, like in Torite. So, this is a technique that can be used as a counter technique for Torite. So imagine that you are completely taken. I'm, I'm not wearing a actual, the proper clothing, but imagine that I have my, my gi and then I'm trapped. Then the main thing is try to uh, remember that the open is going to be like that. I cannot use the regular uh, nuki in order to do so. So the first thing is we're going to do the side pick in the front and play like this. And after that, remember that he's taking us. We can, for example, go like here and cut. This, this can be done, it has to be done really fast. And look, my hips have making a rotation in order to release or at least generate enough space to be able to the sword to cut. So at least the mono uchi has the possibility to go up and cut both of the arms of the opponent. So now, in a few moments, we're going to see a higher uh, detailed explanation uh, using uh, a park. So let's start discussing the Mai. This is a very short Mai. It's a very complex technique to apply, not because of the cuts. Actually, you will see here a lot of cuts that probably you have practiced before, just like Yoko. Uh, giri or kesagiri or gyaku kesagiri. I mean, it doesn't change. They don't, they don't change, but the space changes everything. So that that concept of timing and space is what we call mai. And here we have very very short mai. So that is what makes complex to apply the technique. So can you show us Kalosan here? Yes. For instance, yes. that would be yes. your opponent. Well, we're going to to use a frontal. Uh, attack, so the opponent. Just like just turn here for, for the camera to okay. see us better. So turn the right. Okay. Okay. So describe me. 
remember that I will be wearing something similar to hers, but she's grimy, and I have almost no space here. As you will see, my sword is completely trapped here. So the only way I can actually draw my sword is using my frontal plane. In our school, we call it suihe, like the horizon. So I'm going to use this horizon to be able to do the, the draw of the sword. After that, now I need to generate some space. Now, I, I cannot try to use this line of strength because if I do like that, she can actually take me uh, half my, my neck and stop the flowing of the, the blood to my head. So she can actually choke me. So what I do, I'm going to uh, break the symmetry using my hips. When I break the symmetry, it's now I'm just positioning this area so this side is in a longer position than this one and then I can I can cut. I can cut both of her arms doing this thing. Of course we are, do we are doing in a really slow motion. We are having enough space to do that because it's a steel sword and we, don't, and we want to avoid accident. And of course here we would have to consider the surprise effect. Yes. The opponent. <laughs> yes. Be because um, as you will see, most of the katas that we are working with, uh, you will see most of this, the drawing in this plane, or in this plane. But now, the opponent is not thinking that I can actually make this kind of draw and generate space and correct me. So, we have a study, this front line, and you will see that this uh, particular study was, uh, was started to be developed as a kata. So we have something that comes from the front, from the mag. Now, for example, we can go for Yoko. In this case, uh, let's see. We'll see. You're trapping me. And then, the same thing. I will generate space again and go up and cut. We can have this uh, did the same motion from different positions. For example, one that is really, really interesting is the one from Ushiro. Oh, but before this, if you can, Carlos san uh, the most common doubt here is why doesn't he mm. step me he, with a tsuki once he draws in suihei? Yeah? yeah? So probably it will be the yeah. most common question here. Yeah. So imagine that's a really, really in interesting question because you will think, wait, why don't you just go in your suihe or this draw and then and punch, then. pinch at some point, do a, a thrust. The thing is, if, if I do that, she can... I will see it. Okay. <laughs> she can use the, the position to make position on me, so actually to unstabilize me. So that surprise factor needs to make rotation. I cannot go against her face in this particular plane because she can then change her position, but she's trapping me and I just uh, break the symmetry, she will have a, a, a rotational force that makes her unstable instead of he makes me unstable. Then thank you so much no? for that. Okay. Comments really, really... Not sure. a very common... Yeah. Now imagine that uh, she's going to trap me, she's trapping me here, so uh, what I'm going to do is use some sort of tatenuki. So I'm going to develop this is with a, we have to do it really slow and carefully and we're having more space than we should have because we want to avoid accidents because my sword is going to be really close to, to her face. So it's just for didactical reasons. So I'm going to go up and then I will put my mune against my neck. And just now I will turn and Sukushoshidosh will cut. This is the position we can have and we can have. Actually, we were something we'll li like this. But remember that my sword has been on my back and very close to her face. So for the technical reason and to show you the technique, this is enough to, to make the point of the geometry and the, and the positioning of our bodies. Then we can develop different concepts uh, against uh, the opponent, for example, then uh, the I'm going just to push this up, I'm not with a Tatsuki today. And, uh, if we can, she will, she's holding a knife, a tanto, or a small sword, and she's going to stab me. 
when she goes here. So we have two ways to to move in this case. I can now go in the front because of course it's not going to be effective. If I go back, I won't have enough space because she can actually have me. So I will have two options. In the first one, if I make the torsion, I will put the torsion against me so she can actually continue rotating and hit me. So there's something that maybe is counterintuitive, but I have to go in this direction because when I rotate, I will generate a space so she will have, uh, she, will, she cannot find me. So in this case, when she grabs me, I do the same thing, Sukushoshidos, generate the space and cut. And in this position, we can release them. Other thing that we can do is to, to try to use other draws or other new keys uh, for, the, for, for the same concept. Imagine that you're having me, and then I'm asked, OK, Carlos, you need to draw uh, Yokonuki, so something that is horizontal. So the same thing. I will need to generate torsion, generate the space to and cut. So the main idea around this technique that should be uh, not, you shouldn't confuse this with Kagenutsu, is that we are having a really, really short space, and most of the technique is based on actual motion. We have rotation, and with the rotation, we generate the space. And that's, and that's the main uh, characteristics of this, uh, of this study that is being developed in form of scatter. So, I hope you continue watching our videos, and see you in another curiosity explanation by Carlos. Thank you so much, Josh. You're welcome. Pleasure.